had the opportunity to catch Roxanne Perez versus Jordan Grace last night from NXT Battleground. I did catch the match after the fact, uh, so I already knew who won. Just between Facebook and the DMs that I always get that let me know the results of matches. Uh, so I already knew who won, but I had a lot of interest in this because I wanted to see how Jordan Grace was presented, how the match was laid out, what the story was, um, you know, the, the commentary team, how they uh, how they spoke of her. So um, I enjoyed the match quite a bit. Um, as far as the commentary, you know, the lead, the the play by play guy, he's very good in my opinion. Uh, Booker T is not. He asked Booker T, how does this feel? You're a former TNA champion, a uh, former WWE champion. How does it feel to see this match? And he completely dodged the question. Um, he turned it into something about reality of wrestling and uh, focused strictly on Roxanne Perez. So uh, I was curious to see what his answer was, and he 100% dodged it. But um, but other than that, as I said, I I, I enjoyed it. I thought the story told was was very good. It's not to say they don't do this in TNA, but because of the nature of the knockouts division and them trying to let people know, even though currently it's not, but they try to let you know in general, this is the best women's division in wrestling. We take women's wrestling serious because that's how they present women's wrestling. We don't really get that story with Jordan Grace as she is dominant um, and, and, much stronger than her opponent. They usually kind of present the the knockouts on equal footing. You know, the like the story will be there that Jordan is strong, but it's not like a dominant strong. You know, they as I said, they kind of they kind of um, present it like the women are on on equal footing and may the best woman win. To where here from the minute the bell rang, they told a story early. Jordan Grace is much stronger. Than Roxanne Perez. She was tossing her around like a rag doll. She was having fun too. She was having a blast. She, um, the expressions on her face were much different than what she in TNA. She's like she was very, very happy to be there um, and just, you know, elated to be taking part of this match. Uh, but Roxanne Perez, you know, the story was told early that she had to utilize her, her strength, her, I mean, I, her, I'm not her strength, excuse me, her speed her quickness, her smarts, if she wanted to win the match. And within a couple minutes, she was able to do that, reversed a couple things, uh, was able to get out of a couple moves, and uh, she worked the, the uh, left arm throughout the entirety of the match, which we don't see a whole lot of that in wrestling anymore. You know, uh, we really don't. And when Roxanne wrestled on Impact once upon a time versus Deanna Perrazzo, I didn't think she was as good as people had said. All I heard was, you know, Roxy's amazing. I'm thinking I'm going to watch a five-star match, you know, and, and the match was good, uh, but it was laid out a little bit more for Deanna to, to get a dominant win. It, it wasn't, it wasn't as competitive as I thought they were going to make it. And, you know, Roxy was just doing a, a one-off, so she wasn't about to get hurt. So, it, you know, it wasn't that, wasn't that great, but um, I, I still think she can't talk. I've heard promos of, her, of hers uh, on YouTube, or not at YouTube, but on Facebook. You know, I've seen the videos come across my timeline. I don't think she can talk for fucking shit. But she's got a great look. She's beautiful, uh, and she's she's very good in the ring. She um, she's a lot better than I thought she was. And Jordan Grace, again, looked like a million bucks. Everything she did was was crisp and meant something, um, and and. As I said a few times, whether it was the Royal Rumble or when she showed up on NXT, like the moment is not too big for her. She really uh, fits into the environment very, very well. And as I said, I enjoy the match. I was I was really into it. Um, now, the finish. There's there's a lot of TNA fans that did not like this finish. Let me explain something to you. I said this at the very end of one of my longer podcasts, so may maybe some of you didn't hear this. The way it was worded to me with the NXT TNA relationship was that this is done for basically brand recognition for TNA, for promotion of TNA, 
to get in front of more eyeballs and to enhance the NXT product. And what that means is they're going to try to make the, they're going to lend NXT talent, so to speak, to make their show uh, fresher, you know, to just give it a different feel. Obviously, it's not going to bring a whole crap load of extra eyeballs, but, it, you know, it might. TNA fans might be, like, hey, let me tune into NXT, you know. Uh, I think TNA fans are mo- more likely to chase the TNA wrestlers than NXT fans are to chase the NXT wrestlers, okay? But it is brand exposure for TNA and to enhance the NXT show, okay? So... That being said, when when Ash by Elegance came out, it it kind of hit me because when I was told that it didn't make perfect sense to me. Now it makes perfect sense. They took this opportunity to promote the match at Slammiversary. That's why, and I'm I'm starting to think Tatum Paxley or whatever. I I never know these damn names they have over there. I believe that's her name. It's looking like it's going to be a three way. That's that's kind of where it's going. I don't think she's going to be the open challenge. I think it's, I think they're going the three way route. That's that's kind of what I, I I got off this. But what they did was they basically promoted the match at Slammiversary. Ash by Elegance is a familiar face to them as Dana Brooke. They they even called her Dana Brooke by accident, and it all made sense to me. I think that's what the agreement was in this particular instance we're going to provide you with jordan grace to enhance your show to give you something uh never been seen before in return we need some help promoting this match at slammiversary so i don't think it is as easy as a one you know a one-to-one talent exchange that being said it's making me feel that it's less likely that it, against all odds it'll be a nxt talent answering the open challenge unless it's like Gigi Dolan who's doing nothing and is pretty much on the verge of getting released which might be a good thing because uh you know her boyfriend's in TNA but if it's someone like that you know to to help Jordan get a win back I can see it but I, what I don't see is them is NXT sending two women in exchange for Jordan Grace I don't see them sending someone against all odds and slam anniversary if you understand what I'm talking about I think this agreement was more about promoting the match. Unfortunately, it's a match that the TNA fans don't really care for right now or really want to see. So if you're able to throw a third person in there from NXT, I think it's going to save it. And I think people are going to have a lot more interest in, in seeing it, but I didn't have an issue with the way that the finish went down where um, Tatum Paxley, I believe is her name came down and stole the belt. And then Ash by elegance, comes out of nowhere and then Jordan Grace lays them both out with the belt. She rolls in the ring, goes for the the uh, juggernaut driver, which Roxanne Perez turns into a cutter, which was so smooth. And then hit the Pop Rocks finisher and uh which is a sunset flip bomb and that was it and that was the win. And um you know some people were saying that's not a good finisher, you can't beat Jordan with that finisher, but the way that it was laid out where uh, you know, she took the the cutter um, and then it turned right into a finisher. I, I can live with that. I can live with the finish. You know, I didn't think Jordan Grace by any stretch of the imagination looked weak in the way that she lost. They just told the story that, hey, um, these two chicks are, you know, got involved and now Jordan's going to get her her revenge on them or, you know, um so just for those of you who are just, you know, so Jordan Grace looks weak. They're bearing the knockouts. TNA doesn't give a shit who loses on their programming. You you saw you saw that with the AEW partnership. They don't give a shit. It's business. It's business. It's get our product, our stars in front of a bigger audience to help grow our brand. So I think it's more likely that we're going to see TNA wrestlers involved with NXT than the other way around. Moose is probably the next one. Moose has openly said he wants to do it. He's openly said he wants to sign with NXT one day, just as Jordan Grace has. 
Moose looks like a star. They're, they're going if they take someone from TNA, it's going to be someone who looks like a star. It's not going to be Sammy Callahan, Eddie Edwards, these guys who are out of shape. It's going to be uh, guys who are guys and girls who look like freaking stars. That's that's what they're going to want from TNA. And TNA does have a couple of people that um that fit that mold. And you know, I think that's just what we're going to see. So for those of you who are looking for you know, for them to send their top talent over, that's that's not going to happen. I can, I can promise you that's not what it is. For TNA, it's about promotion and promoting their product uh, to a, a bigger audience and being, you know, associated with a, a fairly cool product. I'm going to say fairly cool because um, it is WWE. But, um, you know, overall, as I said, I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I think... The, uh, the problem is Jordan Grace did lose. That is, that is the problem at the end of the day. But uh, kind of where I see this going now, as I said, I, I think Slam Slammiversary, we're going to see a three-way. Um, Jordan Grace is going to get her win back by pinning Tatum Paxley. And then I think they're going to go on a bound for glory. I think Jordan's going to drop the title at that point to Ash. And then um, Jordan's contract runs out early 2025. I know it was rumored 26, but I believe it's early 2025. And, and that'll probably be it for her. So uh, that's kind of what I envision happening. But if you haven't checked out the match, I would definitely check it out. I think it was very, very good. You got to look at it with an open mind saying, hey, TNA is here doing business. It's not about wins or losses for them.